Okay, here we are again, and this time we are talking about the acceleration caused by gravity. Okay. Acceleration caused by gravity. On the surface of the Earth, there is gravity, and gravity pulls right in towards the Earth's center. At every position on the Earth, it pulls towards the middle or the core of the Earth. Now, the further you get away from the Earth, the weaker the gravity pull becomes. But if we imagine a line here, which is about as high as jet planes go, then this little space between the Earth's surface and where jet planes fly is where 99% of our human existence plays out. And it turns out that this is such a small little height compared to the whole giant scale of the Earth, that the force of gravity in this area is pretty much constant. It's the same. It's, it's a constant force of gravity, which produces a constant acceleration that never changes. And of course, um, as we've seen, it also has no dependency on how big or small you are. So all objects feel the same acceleration. All objects feel the same acceleration, regardless of whether you're big, small, um, massive, or very, very light, as long as we take air resistance out of the picture. Okay? And we've seen that with the falling paper and the falling kilogram. The question would be, what is the rate of this acceleration? Well, Galileo, uh, while he was dropping things off the Tower of Pisa to prove that this was true, he also calculated what the rate of fall was, by probably by using some of the same equations that we've learned. Um, let me just put this out of the way. OK, so we'll go down here. And the actual rate at which you fall The rate of acceleration, or I guess what we could say, um, or the magnitude of the acceleration, that's what we're really talking about, happens to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So what that means is when you free fall, and of course this only applies if you're freely falling, if you have a jetpack on, well that changes everything, right? But when you free fall, your speed increases by 9.8 meters per second for every second you fall. And so to put that pictorially, if you jump off a relatively high place, if you fall for one second, you'll start with zero speed because you've just begun to fall. But after only one second of falling, you'll be going 9.8 meters per second already. And that's pretty close to 35 kilometers an hour. So that's pretty fast. That's, that's about as fast as you could go on your bicycle if you pedaled your little heart out. Imagine pedaling as fast as you could and smashing into a brick wall. <laughs> that would be the same damage as if you just fell for one second and hit the ground. Which is why falling is so bad for us. Right? If you fall for another second, so for a total of two seconds, you would add on another 9.8 meters per second to your speed. So you'd be going 19.6 meters per second. So it means you're up to about 70 kilometers an hour after only two seconds of falling. And then if you fell for a third second, you would just keep adding 9.8. That's what meters per second uh, per second means. Okay? So it's meters per second per second or meters per second squared. That's where the acceleration comes from. Question? Yes. The question is, don't you reach a point where 
you actually stop accelerating when you're falling. And that's because, again, because of air resistance. On the moon, no. In a vacuum, no. On Earth, what happens is the air resistance gets stronger the faster you go. And you do actually reach a point in real life where you're falling at uh, what they call terminal velocity, which means that the gravity pulling down is matched by the air resistance pulling up, pushing up. And you stop accelerating. For a human, that's somewhere around um, 300 miles an hour or something like that. Which is why when you fall out of an airplane, terminal velocity is not going to save you. You'll still hit the ground at 300 miles an hour or something like that. So we're going to ignore air resistance because we're not going to have anything that's going to be falling that fast or that far. So for our purposes, we can forget about terminal velocity right now. But that's a good point to make, and in reality, it does happen. There are limits to how fast things can fall. It's also why a penny thrown off the CN Tower doesn't actually go fast enough to eventually kill you if it hits you in the head. It might hurt like heck, but it's not going to probably kill you. Unless you have really soft bones or something, then you might die. Okay, so that is the magnitude. Now the direction. Now let's talk about the direction. So let me just kind of put a little mark here, and let's work here and talk about the direction. Well, the direction is pretty straightforward, right? Gravity always pulls you down. So it's always down. And in our usual reference frame, down is negative. So when we're talking about gravity, then if we include the direction, the actual amount of gravity or acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The negative sign indicates that it's always down. All right? And because this acceleration of gravity is very special in the, in the fact that it doesn't really change near the surface of the Earth, and it's the same for everybody and everything that falls, we give it its own special letter. We give it a tiny letter G for gravity, and this represents an acceleration. You have to remember that G is really just an A in disguise. And in all of our formulas where you see A, you could also put G, because he's just a special fancy A. All right? So if something is in free fall, and again, it's only when things are free falling, their acceleration becomes the acceleration of gravity, and this little number is your A value all the time. So that's kind of nice. If something's falling, you automatically know the acceleration. It's kind of handy. And so the direction is down. Now, just to point something out, uh, because I've heard some pretty crazy things from students over the years. But if you think about the Earth as a whole, it is a circle, right? And the gravity actually pulls to the center, no matter where you are on the Earth. So in our part of the world, if we stand here, we see that gravity pulls down. But if you were to go around the world, incidentally, if you drill straight through the Earth from this point, you'll end up in the middle of the Indian Ocean. You won't end up in China. And there's nobody standing in the middle of the Indian Ocean, so let's just pretend it's China. They stand like this in China, right? And they, they think that gravity pulls down too. And it does, but from their perspective, down. Which means that it's actually pulling in the opposite direction. So if you want to consider the whole Earth, the little negative sign isn't going to cut it. There's going to be some, we're going to have to do something else. Luckily, though, if we just stick to our part of the world, then down is down is down, and it's always going to be negative, and we don't have to sweat that. Right? But it is true that on the other side of the world, down is kind of up. So just a little thing to keep in mind. OK, and that is how we deal with the direction and the sign for gravity, and the magnitude for gravity, acceleration due to gravity.